Okie doke. So let's get into the open sea fishing attack. So essentially, I, I believe it was yesterday. Yeah, because I was at a birthday party. I just said open sea hacked. Everybody was like, well, it's a fishing attack. Here's the deal. I was at a birthday party. I saw the information. I tweeted it out so that people would see it and start doing the research. That's it. We have an official article here from Coindesk. We're going to go over it. And then we'll kind of get, get, you know, a, a brief kind of top down perspective on it. So OpenSea says a phishing attack impacted 17 users. Now, I, I'm not sure that's true, but <laughs> let's continue. The attack also no longer appears to be active as there has been no activity on the malicious contract for over 15 hours. Non-fungible tokens, NFT marketplace OpenSea says that 17 users were impacted by the Sunday's phishing attack instead of 32 users that was reported earlier. The phishing attack was targeting smart contracts on OpenSea's platform. Quote, our original count included anyone who had interacted with the attacker rather than those who were victims of the phishing attack. The attack also no longer appears to be active as there has been no activity on the malicious contract for over 15 hours, the company said. OpenSea is still yet to determine the exact source of the phishing attack, first detected in early hours of Sunday morning, following rumors circulating in, of an exploit of smart contracts on the platform. CEO Devin Finzer, Finzer we'll go there, subsequently tweeted that 32 users had signed a malicious payload from an attacker and some of their NFTs were stolen. Blockchain security company PeckShield said, said that the exploit was most likely phishing, whereby users authorized the migration of their NFTs to a new smart contract, allowing them to be stolen. NFTs are digital assets on a blockchain that represent ownership of a virtual or physical item. OpenSea is among the most prominent platforms in the NFT world with a recent $300 million investment round valuing it at $13.3 billion. It has seen $3.7 billion of trading volume in the last 30 days, according to data from Dapp Radar. Okay, so one of the things I tweeted, because obviously like if we're talking about a problem with OpenSea, and there's a lot of people that have a ton of problems with OpenSea. One is you can just re-upload other artists content and it doesn't have any way to detect that that's already been op uploaded to OpenSea and you can basically sell fix, which is kind of hilarious because we're talking about NFTs. Um, and then of course there are the security concerns surrounding this. Now as a phishing attack, I don't put any of the blame on OpenSea if that is in fact what is going on because a phishing attack means that the user, the end user has to have made a mistake. This is going to be individual responsibility. It's a little weird within a centralized system uh, to basically put the blame on the user, which is kind of frustrating, right? Because if you are going to be w participating within a centralized system, then you expect that centralized system to offer you some sort of protection. That is the benefit that the plebs always tout for the banks. But as we talk about in cryptocurrency, not your keys, not your crypto, and with great financial responsibility or with great financial individual power, Autonomy comes great responsibility, that sort of thing. It's your responsibility to basically secure your funds, etc. cetera. Um, and in this case, what you need to be aware of is what happens with a, with a phishing attack is they will copy some sort of email that looks exactly like OpenSea or they'll have, you know, basically buy maybe domains that are close to OpenSea, like maybe it has one letter that's mistyped and you accidentally go to the wrong site and you connect your MetaMask wallet, either through a link in your email or through there. And then you sign a contract that essentially steals your NFTs. Well, I say steal. At that point, you signed a contract that gave them your NFTs, in my humble opinion. Now, MetaMask, if that's what you're using, is a self-custodial wallet. Even if you're tying that through a hardware wallet, that's self-custody, it's your keys, it's your crypto, that is outside of the centralized platform, okay? So the mistake goes on to the individual in this case, if you're the one making the poor moves and not paying attention to 
what you're signing and all of that. Now the joke that I made of course was if people really are up in an uproar over OpenSea right now saying it's getting hacked and all of that, how many of the 80% of these NFT users, because 80% of the NFT users are currently on OpenSea, know how to utilize any other platform? And the joke there is pretty clear because like if you aren't even detecting these phishing attacks, if you don't suspect something's weird when it's asking you to sign a contract within MetaMask when you haven't made an NFT purchase or anything, if you don't understand that sort of thing, then what's the likelihood of you like understanding how to move into Immutable X or Rarible or whatever it may be, or moving a whole blockchain over to Solana, right? Like, whoo, mind blown. So there is a lack of education within the cryptocurrency space as it pertains to new investors within the NFT market. And I think that is something that as a community, we need to figure out how to start educating people better. That doesn't mean that you dog on them and tell them they're dumb or anything like that. It means that you need to start trying to actually educate people on how these things function, what to look out for and all of that. I don't put, if this is all true and there was no internal attack, etc. I put the blame on the end user. Now, OpenSea's always had some weird murky stuff going on within the company and could there be other stuff going on and this actually isn't, we can't take this at face value? Sure, but I don't have any evidence of that right now. If you have evidence of it, please tweet it at Son of Attack. Put it in the comment section. I need hard evidence, that sort of thing. We're not going to go off on any speculation here. The conspiracy theory, of course, the tinfoil hat would say there was a disgruntled internal employee that had left the company under bad terms and basically maybe had access to templates of the emails that looked similar and was able to send those out. That's the closest one that I've seen that makes sense to me. It's still a phishing attack at that point though. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next Tuesday.